Hi, everyone. Welcome to this session of the Deni at the Diana Initiative. This is automating threat hacking on the dark web and other nitty gritty details. Uh, featuring our Poov Singh Gotham, who's going to be our speaker today. He's going to be joining us after live with Q&A. So be sure to drop your questions in the stage room in the Q&A, and we will come back on and answer them live for you. Uh, a couple of quick announcements. I want to thank our Diamond sponsors today. Uh, Microsoft, Remediant, Verizon, Intel, Amazon Information Security, eLearn secu e Security, Salesforce, and MongoDB. They are all over in the expo hall if you want to drop in and say hey to them and check out what they're doing. We want to thank them again for helping us put on an amazing show for you. And without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and get this talk kicked off. Again, threat hunting on the dark web and other nitty gritty things. Let's go. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Apul Singh Gautam. Uh, I will be talking about automating threat hunting on the dark web and the things that surrounds it. I would like to thank the Diana Initiative uh, for having me here. So uh, I gave this talk uh, in the uh, during the DEF CON in the Red Team Village, and this will be the same talk. So I'm really sorry if you are uh, if you watched that talk and if you are here again. So let's start. Let's get started. I will hide my. I will close my webcam so that you can focus on the uh, slides. Okay. So a little about myself. So uh, my name is Apurusan Gautam. I go by handle ESG Scorpion. I'm a security researcher. I started into threat hunting, uh, threat intel two years ago. Uh, currently, I'm pursuing my master's in cybersecurity at Georgia Tech. Uh, uh, before this, I was a research intern at ICSI UC Berkeley uh, doing research in Threat Intel. Uh, some of my hobbies include uh, gaming, streaming. So I pretty much game every day, uh, Rainbow Six Siege. And uh, some other the day I stream also. I love hiking. Uh, recently, I started into lock picking and I've been liking it so far. Uh, I also contribute to the security community. It's like my passion contributing to the security community. Uh, I'm a senior uh, TA at Cyberdary. I also contribute to Station X, and uh, I've been giving. I've been involved with many local security meetup groups. Those are my socials. If you want to contact me or hit me up regarding Darknet, and I would love to talk about this. So, what's today's agenda? We will talk about uh, introduction to dark web. What dark web is? How to access dark web? Uh, why? hunting on the dark web first of all we will discuss what is threat hunting why it is important to hunt on the dark web uh, we will go through uh, different methods that you can hunt on the dark web we'll discuss about the tool based methods and the human element also uh, then we will discuss about the hunting architecture how uh, hunting on the dark web can be automated and then we will discuss about uh, threat intelligence life cycle how hunting on the dark web maps to the life cycle I will go a little about OPSEC, why it is important, and then we will conclude the talk. So let's get started. Uh, what? So I'm sure you must have seen these type of similar images before uh, that discuss about uh, that shows uh, what's the difference between clear web, deep web, and dark web. And particularly, I like this image uh, from um, uh, others because it depicts the truth. Uh, about these three categories. So uh, as you can see, surface web, so uh, what surface web is? Uh, surface web is, uh, is the part of the web that is indexed by search engines like Google, Bing, or Yahoo. And uh, uh, these are the, uh, these are the uh, websites that you can directly search, that you can directly get by searching on Google or any other, any other search engines. Uh, the deep web, which is 90% here. Uh, the deep web is the web that is not indexed by search engines. So you can't directly access uh, these websites from Google or these are these are also the websites that are behind some kind of uh, what do you call uh, administrative portal or uh, you need some kind of login access to access these websites. This include this can include anywhere from your uh, school database or your university's database or any uh, company's admin portal. Uh, 
uh, then coming to the dark web so dark web is uh, the part of the web where you need some kind of special software to access uh, and these uh, we will talk about these special softwares and in, in the coming slides and as you can see 90% uh, of the whole web is deep web and uh, people often confuse it uh, because uh, in some of the diagrams uh, similar diagrams it shows dark web is uh, like dark web contains more uh, sites or dark web takes more space than deep web or surface web so uh, this is the diagram for that moving on uh, talking about let's so we will talk about dark web and this whole slides uh, so there are many organizations that uh, offer their services uh, for accessing dark web so there is tor the onion router i2p invisible internet project and zero net uh, there are one or two others but they are not that uh, prevalent so uh, these are uh, decentralized systems so uh, the famous one is Tor and I2P and ZeroNet are coming up uh, slowly. Uh, what Tor, uh, so the domains of, uh, the domain of Tor is of the uh, structure dot uh, onion. So at the end you will see dot onion and it can be anywhere from 16 character or 56 character. Uh, for I2P it's similarly dot I2P. Uh, so we will focus on the diagram uh, you see here. So what is Tor? Or uh, how Tor works. So, as I told you, it's a decentralized system. So there is no particular entity managing it. Uh, it's a three-layer proxy system. So, as you can see, uh, there is a entry node, middle node, and the exit node. Uh, the entry node is uh, where, uh, suppose uh, in this case, Alice uh, she wants to access some website on the dark web. So the uh, traffic goes through the entry node. Then it goes to the middle node and the exit route and then it goes to the destination uh, uh, the entry nodes are uh, publicly listed uh, uh, so these can be found the ip address of these uh, can be found on the uh, clear web the middle node and the uh, exit node are not publicly listed uh, the this this system is useful for an anonymization of alice uh, because uh, so the an analogy of the onion router so then analogy of onion here uh, depicts that uh, the traffic is encrypted in layers so when the traffic from alice goes to the entry node uh, it can only see the it can it can only see the location of the middle node and not the exit node so in this way uh, a particular node can only know uh, uh, the traffic uh, can only know the location of its previous node and the next node and uh, no no uh, and nothing uh, after that or before that so in this way entry node doesn't know the location of exit node exit node doesn't know the location of entry node and in this way the ip address of the alice is also hidden from these nodes so moving on uh, what's uh, so there are many mis misconceptions about uh, dark web and we will discuss a few of them here so what people think uh, uh, whenever uh, someone hears about dark web they all they always think about the criminal things that goes on there or the illegal things uh, but that's not the case uh, there are many good things also uh, uh, on the dark web so it is uh, like it's really important uh, for activists or whistleblowers uh, who can go uh, so uh, that they can go on the dark web without getting detected or without getting uh, uh, they can go on the dark web without getting detected and they can post whatever they want uh, that's why there are many popular sites like facebook and my times etc that have their counterpart on the dark web or as such a dot onion domains uh, so uh, second thing is uh, it's very, so what people think is dark web is really uh, huge uh, but that's not the case if you compare about the availability or the uptime of the websites then there are very less onion domains that are available 24 by 7 uh, but if you compare uh, if you see on the clear web the websites are available 99.999 percent of the time so uh, in this way the dark web is not that huge another thing is uh, people think it's illegal to access the dark web uh, so it 
that's not the case it's not illegal to access the dark web it's illegal to participate in uh, such illicit activities uh, like buying drugs or selling drugs or uh, apart from drugs weapons or tools so it's completely legal to access the dark web uh, also uh, talking about uh, what things are on the dark web so there are many uh, research uh, researchers or literature or uh, several books uh, that uh, that are not on the clear web that you can find on the dark web so that's why dark web is not that bad but today we will talk about the bad part of the dark web so uh, let's talk about that part so these are the relevant sites where uh, actors sell uh, different things or talk about different things on the dark web so uh, that includes marketplaces and forums so these uh, some uh, these are different types of marketplace or forums as you can see uh, suppose credit card forums so credit card forums uh, or uh, credit card marketplace so you will find uh, several credit cards dump, being dumped there or uh, uh, personal documents you will find actors talking about or selling personal documents there insider threats that is recently becoming popular so here you will find people from companies selling their company secrets or trade secrets uh now coming to the products that can that you mostly see on the dark web is uh, so uh, these type of products you see on the dark web and it is very important uh, to research on the dark web because as you can see many of these things are really easy to buy like you can buy ssn on one dollar uh, you can rent a hacker with uh, like 12 dollar per hour or bank uh, you can get a bank details with hundred thousand uh, dollars or critical database exporter or zero they are expensive but it's easy to get it on the dark web and as you may have seen from the recent news uh, uh, 500,000 zoom accounts being sold on the dark web or uh, some hundred thousand Facebook accounts being sold on the dark web so that's why researching on the dark web is very important uh, you can see uh, these uh, type of listings are on the dark web uh, selling different types of accounts uh, this is the data from recent digital shadows uh, white paper so as you can see uh, uh, it it lists down the average co average cost of one account uh, for different uh, online services as you can see the bank and financial aid, uh, costs higher to get a bank or financial account and as as compared to others uh this is again the average price of uh, brute forcing tools uh, for different industries so coming to the part why hunting on the rock uh, also uh, before that uh, what is threat hunting so threat hunting is the proactively uh, searching for cyber threats uh, what do you mean by proactive is uh, searching for cyber threat that has not been happened yet so it's like uh, looking through logs looking through indicators of compromise uh, indicators of compromise includes ip address hashes email address domains etc uh, looking through textual data that we usually do uh, in case of dark web and uh, uh, it's basically hypothesis based approach because there is nothing concrete about it uh, you take one use case you search on that and you get the results and then you go for the another use case and it, in this way it's uh, pro, like iterative searches uh, most of the time in threat hunting uh, advanced analytics and machine learning uh, is useful uh, especially in case of textual data that we get from the dark web you can use uh, nlp or machine learning to uh, reduce your workload and get uh, uh, data analyzed pretty quick so why it's important why threat hunting on the dark web is important as i told you there are many forums marketplaces or dumb shops on the dark web and different types of forums uh, these uh, like criminals or the actors they learn uh, new methods and techniques uh, on the in these forums they monetize their skills they trade their exploits uh, or tools or drugs weapons etc and uh, they communicate within each other uh, with each other uh, about new techniques or about hacking something so uh, this is why uh, researching on the dark web is uh, important so that you can know what these uh, actors are actually doing or what these actors are thinking about or talking about 
uh, it can help uh, identify compromised assets as you may have uh, heard like within the past two or five years uh, many companies databases are being leaked on the dark web so it is uh, you can identify which uh, assets are being uh, are being sold on the dark web and uh, in this way it can help uh, identify attacks in earlier stages like uh, planning stage or recon stage of your attack cycle uh, and uh, another thing that we can talk about uh, like uh, it's useful to talk about are the impacts uh, the dark web research is really important because if you find your data on the dark web then you can reduce the impacts that it causes on the organization some of the direct impacts are personal information loss or trade secrets loss uh, and some of the indirect impacts are obviously reputation loss revenue loss and nowadays it's legal penalties uh, like covering your customers cost so uh, in this way it is important to search on the dark web or uh, it is seri uh, uh, like the dark web research or the dark web part is important uh, uh, similar to that, uh, these are the benefits of the threat hunting. So, uh, if you search on the, if you research uh, on the dark web, you can keep up the uh, keep up with the latest trends of the attacks. Uh, it uh, you can find new tactics, techniques on procedures. Uh, you can find new IOCs. Uh, you can better prepare your SOCs or incident responders so that when attack happens, they can tackle with it uh, in less time. Uh, you can discover new data breaches and in turn reduce damage and risk to the organization. So now coming to the uh, part uh, of what you can use to hunt on the dark web. So we will talk about tools, uh, some tools that you can use to hunt on the dark web and then the human element uh, forms uh, that can be used with along with the tools. So uh, coming to the tool parts. Uh, first of all talking about the language these tools are written so there are many tools written in javascript also there a javascript also there are many tools written in python also nowadays in go also but uh, i still like uh, these tools that are written in python they are reliable at least i haven't faced any issues with them so far uh, so uh, so talking about the first tool that's scrapy so scrapy is a web crawling framework uh, and uh, uh, it's like a so script is a web crawling framework that has multi-threaded cap uh, capability uh, you can scrape uh, multiple sites in a few uh, little amount of time uh, another is tor uh, tor is uh, obviously if you want to access the dark web you need tor onion scan onion scan is a open source tool for investigating different onion domains uh, to identify whether the domain is up or not and uh, different correla uh, correlations between different domain onion domains uh, now before talking about privacy i would like to talk about uh, the how you access store so you don't access store directly you you need to access or behind some kind of proxy or vpn uh, this is because uh, uh, as i told you before the entry nodes of the a tor is uh, visible or uh, publicly listed so your isp can uh, make a block list of all the entry nodes so that you can't access the dark web uh, you can't access the tor that's why you need some kind of proxy uh, to access the dark web uh, here uh, we generally use sox proxy so a uh, little brief difference between http and sox proxy is that http proxy is only for http protocol http proxy works on the http protocol and sox proxy works on sox protocol the difference between these is uh, uh, http uh, proxy only allows HTTP, http data to flow through but sox proxy can allow any kind of data to flow through and uh, uh, about scrapy so scrapy doesn't allow uh, socks proxy directly like socks proxy ip directly to be written in in their program that's why we use some kind of uh, routing tool uh, in this case privoxy uh, uh, there are others like tsox polypo and many more uh, so priv what privoxy or other tools does is they take the socks proxy and route through the uh, like they use their own proxy uh, they use their own ip and then you can write it in scrapy and it will route your um, traffic through sox proxy so 
and uh, there are other tools like uh, there are search engines like ricky lowe's recon and other tools like onion wiki torch where you can find all the onion domains and search for different onion domains so let's talk about scrapey because this is our main uh, framework that we work on uh, and all the codes for extracting data uh, starting from extracting data to analyzing data is written here so uh, this diagram might seem uh, a little like confusing but i will go through it one by one so for explaining this uh, uh, let me break it down uh, to simple steps so first of all uh, all the things that you see here uh, suppose uh, these are different python programs so spider so spider is a python program downloader is a python program middleware is a python program pipeline is a python program and scheduler is a python program and engine is another python program so what spiders uh, so what we do in spiders python program is we give a url dot uh, onion domain uh, to the spiders uh, to the spider the spider program uh, gives it to the engine uh, what engine does is engine uh, is like you uh, it's the main uh, middle part of the scrapey that manages every other python programs so you can assume it that way so engine uh, gives it to the scheduler uh, now scheduler uh, program has all the multi-threading uh, capability like i told you before so scheduler will schedule each each domain uh, with different threads uh, how many you have assigned it to so scheduler will get the domain it will give it back to the engine and the engine will give it to the middleware so what middleware program has so it has uh, your login function and your proxy function uh, so talking about proxy functions this is where you will put your socks uh, ip uh, put your tor ip or put your pr privacy ip so that the request and response go and uh, go through that and come back through that and uh, the login program so uh, many forums like almost all forums require uh, some kind of login access before you can access the data so in the login program you will write your uh, a cookie a cookie data or your username id a username and password that you can use to access the you can use to log in on that particular forum uh, many forums uh, they are behind uh, captcha and as you know uh, google captcha can't be used on so uh, it's mostly image based cap uh, bs captcha and it can be bypassed with uh, uh, different services either you use some kind of uh, python script or you can use online services like death by captcha or anti captcha and they can solve your capture within uh, like few seconds or uh, under a minute so uh, this uh, so login pro login function has these all things uh, so the your request goes through this middleware python program and it goes to the downloader what downloader program does is it simply downloads the html page and sends it back to the engine uh, the engine send is uh, send it back to the spider now the spider has another function which ex extracts the elements uh, so whatever html element you want to be extract extracted like uh, your uh, table information your item information your uh, text textual data you extract it and uh, in scrapy uh, these uh, are called items so you extract all these HTML elements uh, into the items, and then uh, the these items will go to the item pipelines. And now at, uh, at item pipeline, uh, you have defined your database. So I usually use Elasticsearch. Uh, you can use any database, whether SQL or NoSQL, and uh, the items are stored into the SQL. And this process repeats as uh, multi-threading is already uh, in place in scrapy you don't have to write any other code you just have to specify how many threads you want uh, for your scrapy to run and it will run automatically so that's why scrapy is very useful uh, while uh, getting data while scraping any kind of website not just dark web uh, a clear web also so that's why i use scrapy that uh, so much So moving on, as I talked about, uh, we discussed some tool-based concepts. Now uh, we come to the human element part of the dark web, like how can we hunt using humans? So uh, a human, uh, humant or human intelligence. So it's a process of gathering intelligence using uh, contact, like interpersonal contact, or uh, like uh, in other terms, uh, 
uh, engaging with the actor uh, rather by any other technical process and uh, uh, this is the most valuable source because you directly engage with the actor and uh, you try to find out what he is thinking about uh, whether he is trying to attack some company whether he is trying to attack some organization or uh, what different actors are talking about them are talking among themselves and this is why it's uh, really uh, like it's very dangerous and difficult form of intelligence because you directly talk to the uh, what do you call uh, actors and uh, you can uh, just think of it uh, as a high tech equivalent of an fbi undercover agent going uh, like spending years or months infiltrating a criminal organization so he usually he goes to the criminals uh, in this way you talk to the actors here so that's why it's dangerous and also difficult at the same time and uh, it helps you understand the motives and like uh, motives behind the attacks or motives behind their uh, uh, the actors uh, uh, what what are they thinking about and you in a, like if you are doing human intelligence you have to become one of them uh, again thinking about the analogy of fbi and the region that uh, so he spends months and years working to infiltrate so you have to spend a lot of time that's why it's time consuming so you have to spend a lot of time working uh, to infer uh, like to even talk to the actor or like make your foothold in the on the dark web and uh, it can be used uh, so it can be used to bolster your threat hunting process using tool bits uh, so it can be used like uh, uh, for example it can be used in post attack investigation suppose at an, an attack has happened and someone is selling uh, database on the dark web so you can go to the uh, go on the dark web and talk to the actors and see if the database they are selling is like is is it fake or not uh, or uh, it can also be used for a new attack vector discovery so you can identify new ttps that's tactics techniques and procedures uh, so that you can already uh, you can know uh, before the attack happens that these new ttps are being circulated in on the dark web and you can uh, like prepare uh, socks or incident responders again uh, for uh, for uh, you can uh, prepare socks and incident responders for tackling if if ever the attack happens to your organization so now coming to the automated part so can dark web hunting be automated or not so uh, first of all uh, for automating dark web or for doing any kind of dark web hunting uh, you should have some kind of lab setup and now this lab can be anything from a lab lab environment or a vm uh, it can be anything from physical or cloud the main thing is to isolate the network you should not have anything uh, of like personal on that network and obviously you have to install these relevant tools like scrape prepare oxy tor or if you are using elasticsearch then elk and other python libraries now this is the automated hunting architecture that i will talk about here and how you can automate this as you can see there are uh, small automate icons on the parts that can be automated uh, some parts cannot be automated uh, or it is difficult to automate it specifically two things here the scrapy setup and the uh, design or train and nlp model so let's talk from the start uh, the dark web links uh, so for hunting on the dark web you need links of different forums and uh, you can automate uh, so you can use uh, like i told you before you can use search engines like recon or kilos or any other uh, different uh, so like a torch or a tor wiki to get the forum links so this part can be automated you can write a script to get all these links uh, the other part was socks proxies so as you uh, so you need socks or some kind of proxy to access the dark web and we talked about mostly use socks proxies so you can write a simple script to again uh, get all the socks proxies so this part can also be automated now coming to the scrapy setup part so each uh, forum has a different architecture 
so you have to go to the go on the forum uh, whenever you get a, a onion domain you have to go to the forum and then uh, look at the architecture like html architecture of the forum and then write a spider for each forum so this can't be automated because again you have to manually go to the forum and see uh, what fields or what html elements you want to be extracted so the scrapy setup includes this and again uh, you have to go to uh, go and register different accounts on the domain on the forums you can automate the register part but again you have to manually go to the forum first to see how the registration works how the login works so this part uh, all comes in scrapy setup so this whole part is uh, automating this whole part is uh, difficult and again uh, so you get uh, you register all those domain uh, you register different accounts on these forums and for logging in also so you need to uh, set up suppose uh, you are bypassing captcha so uh, the, you have to bypass captcha so you have to set up uh, different services like dead by captcha or anti captcha or any uh, python program python script that you uh, are including to bypass the captcha so you have to write it uh, you have to do this uh, during this scrapy setup so that's why it's not like it's difficult to uh, automate this whole part uh, now uh, the uh, uh, the further things that you see crawler parser analyzer this whole thing i talked about in scrapy so what crawler does is crawler it crawls the html pages of the forums it gets the forums uh, html page uh, parser is uh, like it parses the html document and gets the elements html elements in terms of items uh, in scrapy and the analyzer so this is where you use different techniques to analyze whether you use some kind of uh, regex to get the data that you want or use some kind of nlp techniques uh, to analyze the data and then put it into your database of choice so again uh, designing and training nlp model here so uh, you need uh data so uh, what nowadays uh, people uh, usually do is like uh, they use uh, nlp uh, to filter out the data that they don't want so as uh, there are many uh, like most of the forums they don't have relevant data all the time uh, you get many like you get 50, 60 70 percent of irrelevant data so that's why you need to filter out those data and nlp can be uh, as you know these are textual data so nlp models uh, can be used to uh, filter out these data and that's why you use nlp like you train uh, your nlp model and then you use your nlp model for analysis purpose and this is again why it can't be automated because you have to get the data and you have to train the NLP model first and then use it here. So in this way, this can't be automated. But for most of the part, uh, this architecture has been working for me and uh, most of the tasks are being automated here. So we talked about hunting, we talked about different tools, how we can use what we can use what tools to hunt on the dark web now let's talk about what happens after you got the data like you got the data you analyze the data what you can uh, like what to do with the data so here we will talk a little about threat intelligence life cycle and uh, how uh, the things that we did like hunting from the dark web getting the any links and all maps to the threat intelligence life cycle so as you can see there are five steps to the ti life cycle that's direction collection processing analysis and dissemination uh, the direction part was uh, getting the data from the dark web uh, so the direction part was uh, like figuring out uh, what uh, which forums to go for and uh, this uh, we will talk more about this so it it's like threat modeling of your entire organization uh, that comes under, under the direction part uh, the collection part is where we got the data from the dark web that's human resources as you can see on the right top uh, processing part is uh, uh, processing like parsing raw html data uh, machine translation extracting topics extracting html elements analysis part is where you infer relationship between the uh, data like you use nlp model you use uh, uh, ml models uh, to link data sources identify trends or uh, hacks and leaks and dissemination is where you visualize all these into dashboards, alerts, or reports, and then forward it to your higher managers 
uh, for them to look at. So this is a crux of how thread hunting uh, from the dark web and getting the data analysis part. This all maps to the TI lifecycle. Uh, now we will go a little uh, like into the detail part. So talking about threat modeling. So uh, what threat modeling is like you identify critical assets of your organization and then you try to uh, protect it and uh, from the attackers. So uh, uh, while identifying critical assets, you understand what uh, attackers can like uh, what attackers can uh, uh, on what part uh, attackers can attack on any organization. So in this way, uh, like you understand uh, uh, the capability and intent of attackers and how they can uh, how they can attack your uh, organization what they can use and uh, another thing is uh, uh, different type of actors like hacktivists insiders criminal groups or geopolitical groups anything can be uh, uh, can attack your organization uh, and uh, here uh, while defining critical assets you choose your target on the dark web so whether you want to focus on dumb shops uh, or whether you want to focus on insider threats uh, forums uh, suppose for example if you're a bank you will mostly focus on the dumb shops where credit cards are being dumped so in this way uh, this is why you do threat modeling and you define your critical assets and uh, in this way you prioritize your risks Now moving on uh, the data collection processing part. So uh, you collect from different sources uh, so, uh, for it to be useful to your organization. You collect from the dark web also and you collect from the clear web also. So uh, you can find many things on the page bin Twitter Reddit and nowadays Telegram also where actors talk amongst each other and by combining all these sources uh, it is useful to your uh, for your organization to tackle or to get uh, most out of this threat hunting process. Uh, the data analysis part is, as I told you about, uh, uh, as I talked about before, you can use NLP, ML or DL techniques to analyze the data. Uh, you can use social network analysis to like analyze the users on the dark net or uh, on the clear web also and how they relate to each other. Uh, here comes a part of classification and clustering. So you classify different forums you cluster different uh, uh, products according to the categories and i will little, i will talk little about mitre attack here so what mitre attack is uh, uh, it's a knowledge base of adversary uh, ttps uh, based on the real world observations so uh, you can use mitre attack uh, to map the intelligence you obtained to better understand the ttps uh, that can be used to that can be used by your socks and incident responders uh, to tackle new attacks from the actors so now coming to the opsec or operational security so why uh, maintaining opsec is very important why uh, first of all we will discuss what is opsec so it's the practice of hiding yourself online uh, by disassociating your online uh, presence with your real self. So, uh, in other words, you hide your personal things uh, while being online or while being active uh, on these forums. Uh, this is basically OPSEC. So, uh, in this, uh, like, OPSEC is like you don't, you protect your personal information from leaking outside uh, or uh, you protect your, uh, uh, the whole operation uh, from leaking. Uh, it's derived from the US military. Uh, the things that you protect uh, is your personally identifiable information that includes your full name, SSN, driving license, or bank account, or e even email or email address. And uh, the main thing to note here is uh, what people generally think is like uh, they have to. Uh, focus on op they have to maintain opsec while doing human intelligence or while hunting on the dark web and uh, it should not be like that uh, uh, people should not think of this as an as their as another job requirement or uh, like job uh, process uh, it should be a mindset uh, you should think of opsec before even uh, like thinking of uh, doing human intelligence on the dark web uh, 
and uh, obsec is hard because at the end of the day we are all humans and uh, we like to like we like to be seen as knowledgeable in front of others and this uh, leads to gossiping bragging or like oversharing things that you should not share so that's why it's uh, like hard thing to do uh, i will discuss a few things that you can do to maintain your opsec while doing human intelligence stuff on the dark web uh, the main thing is like you have to start this from the beginning you can't do it like uh, in the middle or you can't just think of okay i have to apply opsec now i have to start this at like after so many days you have started doing human intelligence stuff so it should be the initial thing that you think of uh, the another thing is uh, using I, an isolated system, isolated environment, whether VM or whether lab, uh, and you should not keep your personal information or any personal documents on that system. Uh, you should use uh, Tor over SOX proxy or over VPN. Uh, using it over VPN is more useful as it encrypts data, and yeah, and the SOX proxy doesn't encrypt your data. Uh, another thing is so why as i told you about it's an equivalent of an fbi agent going undercover so he has some kind of persona uh, he has some kind of backstory so you have to maintain uh, personas while accessing different forums and you have to make different personas so different forums uh, so that you don't like no one can uh, like get who you are no one can even guess who you are while looking at uh, similar personas so and this is why you take notes because uh, it's easy to mix personas uh, and that's why you have different personas for different forums and you take notes for that uh, another thing is uh, opsec so uh, human intelligence stuff is uh, uh, 24 by 7 thing it's not like uh, you go to job and you do it 7 to 5 or 9 to 5 uh, because the actors they can guess like you are a, a, you are a researcher and you are not a real actor so it's a, a human intelligence stuff you sh you sh you have to do it like on weekends also or like at night so that's why uh, here the obsec comes into the part because you can't just uh, do it like nine to five and throw away your uh, identity like uh, they can uh, actors can guess it so that's why you have to maintain this uh, what do you call it? Uh, you have to maintain this uh, way of accessing the dark web or uh, spending time on the dark web and another thing uh, uh, that comes here is so many uh, forums are in different languages uh, whether they are in a russian a russian forums or whether they are uh, German forum so you have to change your time zones uh, so if you access a dark web from uh, suppose you access a Russian forum from US so it can give away your identity it can give away your, your like operation uh, so it's better to change the time zones and uh, uh, on the similar lines you have to learn special skills like uh, learning uh, Russian or learning uh, certain slang skills that uh, actors talk among themselves and the last thing is using password managers because you obviously you, you should have password manager. So that was it. Uh, concluding the whole thing, uh, we talked a little bit about dark web, uh, what dark web is, how to access the dark web. We talked about dark web forums and dark web marketplaces. Uh, we talked about what threat hunting is, why you should hunt on the dark web. Uh, we specifically talked about Scrapy and how it is useful to hunt on the dark web then we talked about human intelligence and how it can bolster your threat hunting uh, using the tools uh, then we talked about the automated uh, threat hunting uh, like dark web th hunting uh, like, uh, like architecture uh, we talked a little about threat hunting life cycle and how this all maps to the ti life cycle and a little about operation security and how you can uh, employ operation security in your daily lifestyle uh, similar uh, moving uh, dark moving further dark web threat hunting is hard but it's worth the effort 
uh, you don't get the intelligence that you get from the dark web anywhere else uh, you should always keep operational security in mind uh, the another thing was i told you about looking at more than one resource you should look at more than one forums and you should also hunt on the clear web and the dark web uh, it takes a lot of resource uh, and a team effort but it's worth the effort and uh, i talked a little about uh, usage of mitre attack framework on the dark web you know like uh, from a dark web data uh, these are some of the resources that you can look on uh, uh the like big ones are recorded future insight crowd strike digital shadows yeah uh, thank you i hope you all like the uh, thank you i hope you all like the talk i uh, if you uh, if you want to uh, know more about this, you can hit me up on Twitter or LinkedIn. I would be happy to help. I can talk about Darknet all day. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. Oh my gosh, I was watching the um, the chat on the stage for this and so many questions. Thank you to everyone who was also chiming in with, with answers and, and questions. So let's give a minute here for um, Aparv to start and to join us here. He's coming back online and we will start taking some of the questions. Again, don't forget to fill out the survey and I will quickly announce now while we're waiting that the, uh, if you haven't already heard, today's keynote is pushed back 30 minutes just to give us time to all take a breath, regroup and come back and really give that a lot of time and attention and focus. Um, so let me just, uh, make sure that he's coming in there he is hello hey hey that was fantastic i i imagine you might have seen some of the chatter go by um a couple of questions that came through that i wanted to expand on they were slightly answered in the chat but one of them was um so you know the question came up is the dark web legal or illegal and you said yeah it's it's legal to go on the dark web in the united states but there are there any concerns about are you waiving any rights or are there any um other concerns as far as the u.s government um, may stand if you go out onto the dark web uh well uh, not just talking about not talking about just u.s uh, there are other countries like you can access dark web from uh majority of the countries i don't know specifics about some countries that it may have on like any rules regarding accessing accessing dark dark web uh most of the time they block accessing dark web but you can circumvent it using a uh, proxy or vpns so i don't think there's anything illegal about accessing dark web as far as i know uh the but the thing is if you indulge it any uh, like illegal or uh, uh, like as, as such practices, then that's illegal. So, right. Yeah. Okay. So proceed with caution, maybe know your local laws and like you showed, set up a very isolated lab yeah. so that there's nothing there that, that identifies who you are. Yep. Great. Uh, one question did come up elk. Uh, we think we got an answer in the chat, but we wanted to verify what did ELK stand for on one of your diagrams? Oh, uh, so it's Elastic, Logstash, and Kiwana. Uh, so basically, uh, it, nowadays it's called just Elastic Stack, but uh, three to four years before, it used to be called as ELK Stack. Got it. Great. Great. Um, so one of the other questions that came up is VPN. So you mentioned using VPNs and there was some chatter about different VPNs and and I don't know if this is something that you can answer uh, directly, but um, do you have a best practice around choosing a VPN service? Uh, what I, I think what most of the people do is they look for a particular VPN that doesn't store logs, but then again, the another question comes is whether they say they don't store logs and they still do. So that's a diff uh, difficult thing to like, you can't figure out whether they really store logs or not. 
hmm. but yeah i mean there are some famous ones uh, like proton vpn or nord vpn who are like uh, i know about proton vpn it's in switzerland so you can look at these vpns that has some good uh, data retention uh, what do you call data pri- uh, data privacy laws and choose your vpn another thing i i think i saw in the chat about using your own vpn so yes you can create your own like just spun up a digital ocean server and create your own vpn so that is also a good idea good excellent all right so i'm checking the chat for any other questions here um i think that was it that i saw come through um there was sort of maybe we just touch back on this quickly we have a we have about a minute left uh mm-hmm. some of the benefits so you outlined that you can definitely find more information and better protect maybe your company and yourself uh through threat hunting on the, on the dark web at yep. the end of the day for the average person is the risk worth the reward in your opinion so uh, for the av- like what average person looks on the dark web is mostly like they are just cu- curious like what goes on the dark web and uh, majority of the time people go on the dark web just for looking at some kind of books that they know that's on there uh, but again it's very hard to find those book like i have seen myself it's not easy to find those research or those books uh, on the dark web and i mean i i can't say if it's useful uh, like if you compare it to like whether it is useful or whether it's worth the risk or not uh, but it's hard to find normal oh. <laughs> You must be in California. We're under evac in certain parts around here. So oh, I'm sorry. I I you can't hear me. No worries. We're at the end of time anyways. So please fill out the surveys. Don't forget the raffle. Thank you so much for an amazing talk. We had such a good conversation around this. I really appreciate it all. And the next talk will be on the stage in about 9 minutes. Thank you everyone.